シルバー事件のオリジナルのディレクターをやっていた須田剛一です。海外ではスダフィフティワンと呼ばれてるんですけども、まあこの作品は僕がまだそのスダフィフティワンと呼ばれる前のゴーチスダとまあ名乗っていたというか、まだ無名のヒューマンという会社を独立して最初のグラスオッパー立ち上げて最初のゲームになります。1999年に発売して PS1 なんですけども、まあこの時は日本語版しか発売されてなくて、まあその後もうんいろんな形でリメイクもしくはリマスターとか、まあ、普通のベタ移植とかいろいろ考えたんですけども、まあ、なかなか実現することができなくてようやく17年ぶりに、まあ、今回英語化も含めたシルバー事件 HD リマスターという形で発売することになりました。My name is Darren Rock, and we're here at PAX 2016. I just bumped into a special person named Suda51. One of my big inspirations, the No More Heroes. I couldn't even put down the control. I at least played maybe five or six hours straight. I was just blown away by everything in general, like the art, the music, the soundtrack. There's not really anything that makes a Suda51 game a Suda51 game, because to go into it with expectations is already kind of limiting yourself to what this guy is capable of. It's, it's a roll of a completely new set of dice every time. Dada Grindhouse. Like, it, it, it is so against your traditional expectations of, okay, this is what a video game is. This, this heavily metaphorical, allegorical story mixed with like these really like, oh man, also wrestlers are here because that's cool. Killer7 was my start. And then it, back in college when that came out, I would call over people. I'm like, you, you have to see this. You're gonna think I'm crazy, but this is awesome, and you're not gonna see anything like it. There's always these unforgettable moments from them, and those stick with you. That's probably the thing I like the most about it is is how bravely odd it can be. Everybody's default is usually just make it real. Just make it as real as possible. And he's like, I'm gonna start out real. And then I'm going to tint everything with a magenta gradient that goes from right to left. Oh, and I'll also outline everybody. And when the blood happens, it might be yellow sometimes. He has this very unique style that stands out alone, and it's very unapologetic. But there's something about Suda51 and the way he captures and maintains the humanity of his subjects and his characters, even in that dark and difficult world, that is hugely unique and compelling、uh, to him as an author and to me as a developer influential as well. 当時オールドスクールのテキストアドベンチャーっていうのが日本でもすごくたくさん出ててまあすごく人気もあったジャンルなんですけどもまあうんそのスタイルでいくのではなくてもう少し新しいスタイルでやりたいなと思ってだけど何かアドベンチャーゲームの文法であったりとかうんある意味固まっていた構成みたいなものを全部一回解体したいなと思ったんですよね。まあ、その時に参考になったのがジャンリク・ゴダールの映画の「まあ、ヌーベルバーグ」っていう映画があってアランドロン主演なんですけども、まあ、この映画を見た時に、まあ、ゴダールの手法あの人ってさまざまな映像の挑戦をしていてあるシーンで、まあえー、男女がちょっと引きの絵で語っているんですけども、まあ、まずこの2人のダイアログがあってだけどそこにモノローグが入ってくるんですよ2人の。その喋ってるのとは別の心境みたいなのが別に入ってきてまたさらに今度一回絵がタイポグラフィーになって別の言葉が出てきてで少しナレーションみたいなのも入ったりとかしてでも一つのシーンでものすごい誤層ぐらいの情報が入ってくるんですよ。これはこれは何なのでもそのシーンが僕すごく好きでまあどんな内容だったかさっぱり覚えてないんですけども。まあ、あなんかこういうものをやりたいなと思ったんですね。でシルバー事件はもともとクライムサスペンス犯罪ものを描こうと思っていてだけど犯罪というのはまずは起きた事件というのはすごく表面的なものでしかない
だけどこの真相というのはどうやって解明するのかというときに刑事たちの物語だけじゃなく裏側のジャーナリストのストーリーだったりとかだけど全くそうではないものを今度スクリーンの別の情報として流したりとかうんそういうことをいろいろ映像表現であったりとかテキスト表現みたいなものを駆使してやろうと思ったのはやっぱりこだわるからの影響ですかね。はい Looking into Suda, I came across、uh, the Silver Case. I just couldn't really play it. So I didn't. I'd never heard of it. I heard of all kinds of Suda 51 games. Never heard of the Silver Case. Well, I know the game. Unfortunately, it wasn't available uh, in, uh, in Europe when、uh, when it came out.、Uh, I'm so excited、uh, that it's going to be released soon,、uh, so I will finally be able to play it. I even learned some Japanese, but that was definitely not enough to actually, you know, catch the nuances of the Japanese language. I knew Silver Case existed. I thought that I had heard that it was coming to DS at one point. It, that port, if it ever existed, it never came out. So like, but I had this hope that like, okay, Silver Case is probably going to come out eventually. ファンからはいついつ出るんですかってずっとずっと聞かれていたので、今ずっと英語版を作りたいっていうのはあって、まあ移植なりのことも考えてやってたんですけども、具体的に考えたのはまず9年前ですね。TDC で。僕が講演したときに、まあ、ノーマンヒローズの発表だったんですけども、まあ、そのときに最後に、えー、僕らの最初のグラスオーパーの最初のゲームのシルバー事件を、まあ、DS に移植しますという発表をしました、まあ、実際あの DS の移植は完了したんですけども、まあ、最大の問題である英語化、まあ、これが宙に浮いたままで,であとは、まあ、ただの移植だったので DS のこのダブルスクリーンまあ、DS のこの2つのスクリーンを使った遊びというものはまあ全くできなかったんですね、まあ、で単なるうん移植じゃだめだと思って、やっぱりどこかでリマスターを作らなければいけないなと思って、まあ、その時は9年前は断念しました、でまあ、そこから月日が経って、まあ、なかなかそういうチャンスがなかったんですけども、も、まあ、ちょうど2年前にプレイズムさんから、まあ、シルバー事件の、えー、海外版を出しませんかという話がプレイズムでから。でまあ、そこで本当にできるんですかすごい量ですよやっぱりネックは表と裏だったんですよねシナリオの表があって今度裏のジャーナル、まあ、トランスミッタープラシーボがあってこの意味合いを本当に理解できるのって、まあ、プレイしてなぞっただけじゃなく本当にこのゲームのシナリオの意味そのものも理解してもらって言葉だけをチェンジするだけじゃ、うん、絶対に伝わらないなと思って。うん、うんなんかね、これだって決め手がずっとなかったんですよ、だからそれはおそらく今回、プレイズムさんと、まあ、出会うまで、いつかね、出会う運命だったんじゃないですか。<笑>しかし。It's, it's nice to see things like that in our industry as it matures and gets older. That we've been around long enough for things like that to happen. To have a game that, 
you know, that didn't get its shot, be able to come back around, like have enough time for that cycle of, of rebirth or second chances. The art doesn't change. Uh, the, the, the graphics might have changed, the capabilities of computers or whatever might have changed, but the art itself doesn't change. The story doesn't change, right? The, the culture around that story still existed or still exists. I think it's important to be able to to give a wider audience to something that maybe didn't get it before. Uh, I'd never heard of the Silver Case. I've played the Silver Case, or part of the Silver Case, right now and love it. And if I played it in 1997, it would have changed my life. I love the idea that this could change somebody's life right now. It didn't, it couldn't before. There was, the internet was in its infancy, you know, like, there was no way for people to get a hold of this game in the way that they can get a hold of it now. As an independent developer in the West, I think these games capture so much more of what we're trying to do for our audience than our own AAA developers and publishers are trying to do. Frankly, I feel over here, you know, our AAA storytelling is repetitive and dry and we do the same things over and over again. And I think there's so much to be gained to remaking some of these stories and remaking some of these games and showing people that a lot of the things they think they're doing originally now are coming from an entirely different place. We're actually retreading ground that was cut long ago by so many of these developers in Japan and Suda51 is a huge example of that. My name is Douglas Watt. I am a producer and director at Active Gaming Media, and I'm currently responsible as the director of the remaster version of the Silver Case from Suda51 and Grasshopper Manufacture. It's a 17-year-old game, so a lot of people think, how, how do you translate that? But th there's a lot of work involved, but it's relatively straightforward work. You, you know what you need to do. You've already got the game is made, so now you just have to make it work again so to speak. And so there's a lot of translation, uh, not, not linguistic translation, but taking these old uh, scripts from the PlayStation 1, moving them over to the PC, making sure they still work and do what they're supposed to do. And we worked very hard to ensure that the graphical design of the PlayStation 1 game was maintained not just visual threads, but thematic threads as well, but enhanced aesthetically to create a modern, low-poly thematic feel. Miyamoto Takashi is now a designer. He's an animation mechanical designer, prop designer, set designer. In the human era, Suda has Moonlight Syndrome, which is a film of Moonlight Syndrome. え、その作品の前に私自身がえ、ヒューマンで、え、作品に、え、小さな作品なんですけど、参加したのをえ、須田さんが、え、僕の読みまして、え、それで、え、この映画いいということで、ムーンライトシンドロームのキャラクターデザ
uh, that will be released and that's already available for demo on Steam. And it was rejected. Too beautiful, too nice, not enough silver case. And so we went back through, we took out some polys, we reduced some texture quality, we changed the lighting to be more surreal aesthetic that's real like but not real. PS1 あの、ピースはまあ、64のポリゴンを僕好きなんですけども、あのジャギ感っていうんですかね。うん、ジャギ、ジャギジャギアート。このジャギジャギアート感をうまく出したいなと思って、はい。やっぱりこうジャギ出